Well, hello, I'm Jonathan Milam here with a review of a, another wonderful vintage trumpet. This is a Busher Model 220. Uh, Busher was probably at its peak making horns in the 40s, 50s, 60s, perhaps the 30s. And um, I had, uh, before I started making videos about two and a half years ago, I had uh, a very nice Busher. Uh, they called them the True Tone Model 400, and they had several different um, models within the 400. But uh, I had uh, a couple of nice 400 trumpets, a very nice uh, Busher cornet as well, and um, then I started making videos after I'd sold them. And I'm really sorry I don't have those horns now, although I do have some pinks up on a website. They made a gorgeous horn, and one of the outstanding features of their instruments is they had a flared bottom and top to their uh, valve casing area. And it became even somewhat more pronounced shortly after they made this horn. But, uh, and this is a true tone, which was, it really is, they make a very nice instrument. Um, but this is not the Model 400. The Model 400 started shortly after they made this uh, 220. So, at any rate, uh, great trumpet here. Uh, some might call this a pea shooter because it is definitely a tighter wrap. And this is the third um, tight wrapped horn that I've had. They were very popular, I think, in the 20s, 30s, and uh, maybe into the 40s. Um, I thought they would have a very piercing, shrill tone because they do have a smaller bell flare, probably about uh, four and a quarter, something like that longer bell, obviously a little tighter bell since it's not as open in this area, not as large here, but um, not so. In fact, if anything, to me, they seem warmer than uh, the horns that have the thicker wrap. So uh, one interesting factor about this is uh, you're going to have a longer bell. If you straighten the bell out on this horn, it is, to my way of thinking, going to be somewhat longer just the way the instrument is made. Uh, I believe I'm correct on that. They have the underslung third slide on the um, intonation for the third slide. Not really crazy about that. It does throw off the way I like to hold a horn. But if you like a power grip like this, it uh, might be just what you like. Um, beautiful logo. Uh, my camera is not... I'm going to have to replace it before long, so I doubt if you can see it. But a lovely little logo, and I'll try and put a link up to some pictures that I have online of this horn. Uh, great sounding trumpet. And when they made the bell flare, when they flared the valve casings here, uh, one thing that's really neat about it is they threaded their top caps inside the valve casing. So you can see here, there's not an external screw, but the uh, top cap, actually, the portion here, screws directly into the interior of the valve casing. So you don't see any threads. It's the same thing on the bottom of the horn. This silver piece actually threads, hidden to the view, into the interior of the bottom of the valve casing. Just um, really nice horns. I like the way they've uh, they fashioned this. They've got a little extra metal wherever your slides pull in. I always over lubricate my horns, which is why I take pictures with uh, blue satin and I always wind it up because there's oil spots all over the satin and I try and cover them by hiding that. But at any rate, um, you put a little extra on here when you close up the horn, it's butted up against extra metal there. I really, really think that's a uh, nice feature and I always appreciate that on any horn that I find. The top caps on this horn, which is a 1940, made in 1940, are concave, so they crown a little bit. Always uh, different when one finds that in an instrument. But 1940, model 220, a nice dark tone. I'm going to use a, it's a small trumpet flugel mouthpiece. It's not got the huge throat that a lot of them do. A little tighter, about a 24-25 drill, I think. But I think it does nice to give you an idea of the horn. Then we'll try something uh, a little more modest uh, depth to the mouthpiece in just a moment. All right, we'll show you how the
the valves behave. And that's one thing about bushers. I've not had the luck in purchasing busher horns and finding good compression that I have with cons and uh, kings and olds. Um, just my feelings, and uh, maybe they were better, and I've just had, uh, most of the bushes I've had have been a little weak. But this one does seem to have good compression, and certainly the valve action is uh, very nice. <laughs> certainly keep up with me. Nice tone, isn't it? Sounds good in the room here. I hope it conveys well. All right, we'll try just a uh, little number to highlight the uh, darker sound of this trumpet. video I'll uh, pull another tight wrapped horn pea shooter if you please out and to compare them but it gets a surprisingly dark tone as well all right a little uh, shallower mouthpiece not a screech by any stretch of the imagination but uh, a little shallower than a trumpet flugel piece a little uh, brighter sound <laughs> Just a very nice playing trumpet, great valve action. I'm sure these are mother of pearl uh, pieces here, and uh, good looking horn. If you can find these bushers from the 30s, 40s, 50s, even into the 60s, um, I do know people that are very, very fond of them and have found them to be very fine instruments. Model 220 here, and a pleasure to play. Thanks for joining me. I do hope you'll have a great day, and as always, God bless.